ever wondered how diving boards cantilever bridges and cantilever cranes resist loading they use cantilever beam principle a cantilever beam is fixed at one end and free at the other end in today's lecture i will teach you how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram for a cantilever beam with a uniformly distributed load and a mid-span point load stick around till the end of the lecture to learn fully how to draw these diagrams Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about cantilever beam with point load and UDL. The problem which I want to solve today is this one. This is the cantilever beam with a fixed support at the end. It's a six meter beam as mid span point load of 50 kN is applied. A uniformly distributed load of 6 kN per meter is applied here as well. We have to sketch its shear force and bending moment diagram. And as you know that for finding shear force and bending moment diagram, we need to work out reactions first. The first step will be to find out the reactions. For a cantilever beam, what do you think how many reactions will be there? I think it will have three reactions horizontal and vertical reaction and additionally it will have a reaction moment as well because joint is fixed at point a that's the reason it will generate a resisting or a reaction moment and we will see how we can find out this moment also you have to work out total load due to this uniformly distributed load as this load is spread on six meter span the total load will come out to be six kN per meter multiplied by the span here it is spread on six meters so that's the reason we multiply six with six we get 36 kN that is the total load due to uniformly distributed load for finding reactions, I will use equilibrium equations. And you are aware that there are three equilibrium equations. Summation of horizontal forces equal to zero, summation of vertical forces equal to zero, and summation of moment equal to zero. And we will employ these three equations to find out reactions. The sign convention which I have used here is upward forces are positive, rightward forces are positive and clockwise moments are positive. This is when you are starting from left side. If you are starting from right side, then reverse is true. These directions will be reversed. So positive X will be leftwards, positive Y will be downwards and anti-clockwise moment will be positive if you are starting from right side. Summation of horizontal forces equal to zero. There is only one horizontal force acting here, HA, and you will equate this force to zero, which means reaction HA is zero. We still have to find out VA and MA. For finding out VA and MA, I will find out summation of moment at A equal to zero and summation of vertical forces equal to zero. First, summation of moment at A equal to zero. Here, VA and HA they are not creating any moment because they are just lying at the same point where I'm finding moment, that is point A. That's the reason they will have zero distance or perpendicular distance. Remember, moment is equal to force times perpendicular distance. If there is no perpendicular distance or if there is no distance at all, then it will not generate any moment. And additionally, here we have resisting moment, MA. Because it is a fixed support, it will generate this resisting moment or reaction moment. This 15 kN mid-span point load, it will generate moment with respect to A and the distance between 15 and A is 3 meters. So we will multiply 15 with 3. It is creating a clockwise moment with respect to A. That's the reason it is positive. And UDL, total load 36 kN, 6 times 6, it will generate a moment with respect to A as well. And the distance between the point load and A is 3. We equate everything to 0 and then we get MA is equal to minus 153 kN meter, which makes sense. The moment came out to be negative, which means that anti-clockwise moment. This is going to be hogging moment, which means tension at top and compression at bottom. And, and as you would imagine, if you apply loading over here at B and C, this top portion is trying to stretch and the bottom portion will try to compress and hogging moment means tension top and compression bottom sagging moment means tension bottom and compression top 
summation of vertical forces equal to zero we have va only one vertical force and we have this downward force 15 that's why it's negative and we have this total load six times six from here we get value of va as 51 kN. in this way we have found out all the reactions we got ha equal to zero we got va equal to 51 kN and we have got MA equal to minus 153 kilonewton. Starting at point A, at point A, I will just have one vertical force which is upwards. It is 51 kilonewton, so at zero point, it is 51. At point B, again, just before this point load, I have upward force and take away total load generated due to uniformly distributed load. Now, the uniformly distributed load is spread on three meter span. So six times three. Remember, I'm just considering just before B and this leads to 33 kilonewtons. At point B, all you have to do is to subtract this point load from whatever loading you had at that point. So we had this 33, so 33 take away 15, it gets me 16. At pre end, you will have 18, take away whatever load you have between B and C. Between B and C, I will have 6 times 3, which is 18. Finally, you will get a zero shear force. Let us see how we can plot this on a diagram. Shear force diagram. This is a table which I got a little earlier. First value is 51. And between A and B, the load is changing. It is a uniformly distributed load. So that's the reason the diagram is going to be inclined. It will not be straight horizontal line when you don't have any load between A and B. Here we have loading. The next part will be 33, which is here. That is just before point load. And then you will apply point load. It will reach at 18. And after that, you will simply equate it to zero. Again, we have loading between B and C. That's the reason it is not a straight horizontal line. It is inclined line. Once you have got all these values, then you can shade this shape to make it look really beautiful. This is termed as final shear force diagram. Let's now move to bending moment diagram. For bending moment diagram, the first thing I want to do, I want to work out moment at different points. First point is point A. Point A has a reaction moment, which is minus 153. So I will write this reaction moment here. Point B will have a moment generated due to this UDL 6 kN per meter if you are working out from the right side. I think in our case, it's easier to work from right side than from left side because we just have this UDL. If you want it, you can work out moment over here as well. So from here, you will have a reaction moment and then moment generated due to this load. Ultimately, you are going to get the same answer. So from right side, 6 times 3 is the total load so 6 times 3 times half of this load will be acting at b and this is a clockwise moment but now you can see i have put a negative sign because earlier i said if you are taking loading from the right side then the reverse will be true in terms of sign convention which means that anti-clockwise moments now are going to be positive and clockwise moments are going to be negative so that's the reason i have negative sign over here and at point c you have got nothing so you will have a zero moment let us now plot these values on a diagram. This is the bending moment diagram. The first value is minus 153. Remember that negative moments are to be plotted on top side of the bending moment diagram. Now this is the tension side and compression is at the bottom. And we term these moments as hogging moments. And then you have a second moment minus 27 and then you have zero moment this is a negative bending moment this means that we have tension at the top and compression at the bottom normally in case of a simply supported beam we have compression at top and tension at the bottom another important thing these lines are connected with a two degree curve if you had only point loads then we draw a straight line between moments but if you have a uniformly distributed load the diagram is going to be curved and this is a two degree curve in this way we found our bending moment diagram Finding out bending moment diagram is extremely important. This tells us where do we provide more materials? Where is more bending moment? 
and you would have seen that in cantilever beams the maximum bending moment is at the fixed end which means that the section is going to be thicker at fixed end and at point c at free end you don't have any bending moment at all this means there should be lesser material the depth of the section should be less and i'm going to show you one picture which will really make the things very clear and i took this picture at stratford station near jubilee line in london you will see that where the beam is fixed it has more material the section is deeper whereas at the free end there's lesser material